Hello and welcome to RAG Talks. My name is Danielle Little, president of the Warner Robins Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And my name is Kamisha Hughes and I am the social action chair. Today we're going to be discussing the census. We have two special guests who we will be discussing the upcoming census with. First to my left is Miss Jessica Walden. Jessica, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with the census. Great. Well, thanks for having me tonight. It's you're great welcome. to join y'all. Yes. Um, I'm Jessica Walden. I am your local partnership specialist for the okay. U.S. Census. Okay. And so part of my role is to help engage the community, get mm -hmm. our partners activated, excited, educated, yes. and uh, ready to roll when the 2020 census comes mm -hmm. around. And um, I'm here in Central Georgia and uh, really excited to be working with y'all, one of our oh, most active you. partners in the, in the area. Well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and Mr. Stephen Galloway. Good afternoon. Welcome. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm Stephen Galloway and I am with Fair Count. Uh, we are a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization created by Stacey Abrams to create a fair and accurate census count while also creating pathways to civic engagement. I'm happy to be here and happy to talk about the census and how to make sure we get a fair and accurate count in 2020. Thank you. So let's start. <laughs> Can you help us inform our community on the importance of the census? Give us a little bit of background of why we have it every 10 years and the importance of ensuring that everyone is counted and talk a little bit, a bit about how much money we leave on the table when we're not accurately counted? Well, that's a great question. Um, the census, the 2020 census is a decennial census. That mm -hmm. means that it happens every 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so once every decade, we get a chance to be counted once, only once, and in the right place. And so it mm -hmm. is so important for our communities to spread the word that the census is coming and mm -hmm. to participate, to mm -hmm. know that this is a process that was actually mandated in the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. It has been happening since the late 1700s, so since mm -hmm. our earliest days in the country. And the numbers from the census affect all of our lives deeply. This helps determine our federal dollars and how they reach us as citizens in the United States and as residents in the United States, I should say. And that is $675 billion oh being determined by census numbers. So I like to tell our communities that when we think about um, the roads we drive on, the schools that our children mm -hmm. are in, the lunches that they're eating, mm -hmm. things like Pell Grants, things like facilities for our elders and for mm -hmm. those disabled, so many of these things are determined by census data. It's not based on need, it's based on numbers. Okay. So every 10 years, we get the chance to be counted. Okay. And um, since the beginning, every inhabitant was counted. So remember mm -hmm. that every inhabitant, okay. you mm -hmm. do not have to be a U.S. citizen to be mm -hmm. counted in the mm -hmm. census, but you need to be here and um, a resident living mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. to participate. And so mm -hmm. it is a really great opportunity to be counted. Mm -hmm. um, and as I tell people, this is about sharing your story. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, not only is there federal funding and being counted and being saying that I'm here and this is where my story begins, there is the political piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, political allocations, redistricting, all of that is determined through mm -hmm. census numbers. So mm -hmm. no matter what side of the aisle you're on, we want to mm -hmm. make sure that Georgia has power in our yes. U.S. Congress, that we have representation. And so we were one of the few states to actually gain a seat 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. There are other states in danger of losing a mm -hmm. seat, and all that's going to be determined by oh, census yes. participation. And that's okay. from... The, from the U.S. Congress all the way down to our local redistricting or our districting in a local level. Okay, okay. And how will we be able to, to participate in the census? Will the information be mailed to us or will we be able to complete it online? Can you step us through that process yes. and so what the timeline is? Right. So it's a very historic time for the U.S. Census because mm -hmm. like all things, we're going digital. Mm -hmm. um, yes. mm -hmm. So <laughs> that means that it's going to be different this time. Um, okay. You will get an invite to participate in the census and that means it's time to go online and fill out your census questionnaire. 
Now, yeah. that doesn't mean that's the only way. There's still the opportunity to call in your responses. Mm -hmm. There's also the opportunity to request a paper census and say, I want it mailed to me. I want to do it the old fashioned way. Yeah. Um, so those are still out there, but it is, uh, we're saving paper where we are going digital. Okay. And so this 2020 census is, is definitely going to be a historic one. As far as the timeline goes with that, that means that right now we're educating people. We're letting right. people yes. know that right. this is coming. Yes. That means early 2020, that, that communication truly heightens and um, our partners are activated with plans in place. Mid-March, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you will get a card in the mail um, mm -hmm. attached to your geography. So um, we know that your home address is a resident, so you get that card in the mail and it says time to go online and fill out your census. Mm -hmm. So you would go online. You would fill out your census and you're done. About 10 okay. questions. Yes. Um, it should take about 10 minutes, depending mm -hmm. on how many mm -hmm. people you have in your home. Yes. But um, by April 1, that is census day. Yes. So that is like the most official date I can give you. April 1, an easy one to remember. Yeah. Um, and so I encourage people to try to do their census by April 1. Yes. Um, okay. so that is a great time to use as your reference date, but also as your deadline. Oh, um, yeah. Because then we get into mid-April. You'll start getting quite a few reminders. You haven't participated. Mm -hmm. Where's your responses? Mm -hmm. You'll yes. get some correspondences in the mail. Um, and then after that, that's when the enumerators will start hitting um, the streets mm -hmm. and knocking on the doors and making sure you fill yes. out your census because we need those numbers as a country. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, Mr. Galloway, since yes. we know what the census is and a timeline, mm -hmm. how is Fair Accounts helping to ensure everyone is counted? Yeah, so we're doing a lot of things at Fair Account right okay. now. First of all, we're doing things like the census is doing right now. We want to get the word out about the census and okay. how it affects our community. Okay. Uh, one of the ways that we're doing that, especially since the census is online, is okay. that we're going in communities, especially rural communities, that okay. have trouble accessing internet. Okay. And internet, internet installs in those sites. Okay. We're also uh, providing tablets and laptops oh, so excellent. people that don't have these devices can also uh, get online and fill out their census, look for census jobs, okay. and things okay. like that. Uh, like I said earlier, one of our things that we're doing at mm -hmm. Fair Account mm -hmm. is providing pathways to civic engagement. Okay. We feel like putting these internet installs in these communities yes. is something that the communities can rally behind yes. and to have, take pride in and oh, to get yes. to know their neighbors. Oh, yeah. So uh, that's what we're doing at Fair Count around mm -hmm. the census. And we look forward uh, to seeing how things will turn out as we get closer and closer to Census Day, April 1st. All right. Excellent. All right. Also, um, with the census, we know that there are job opportunities, employment opportunities. Can you kind of give us a little bit more information? Absolutely. I would encourage anyone if they're looking for part-time or full-time mm -hmm. temporary employment, that mm -hmm. census would be a great resource right now. Apply okay. now. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to 2020census.gov slash jobs and begin okay. the application process. I encourage everybody be patient it is a process yes. these are governmental jobs yes. um, so that is happening right now that'll continue to happen okay. these are um, flexible jobs and they okay. start at around $14 an hour and oh, have wow. different different um, okay. types of, of opportunities it may be a numerator but it could also be clerkships it could be okay. um, working in the offices and the field staff. So there's a lot of variety okay. mm -hmm. and diversity to the jobs and, and how you can work it. And I just encourage our local communities, apply for these jobs because yes. when it does come down to enumerating throughout our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. um, it's good that pe we have people who know our neighborhoods and mm -hmm. know our neighbors. Yes. And so the more local people we can get hired for these jobs, oh, the yes. better our mm -hmm. count will be as communities. All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Okay. So... Let's get into some of the hard to count, what we consider the hard to count areas and why those areas are considered hard to count and what are some of the things that we're doing um, to reach those hard to count um, populations in our communities. Well, there's a really great resource online on the census website. It's the Rome um, mapping tool. And you can mm -hmm. actually get on there, put in your address, um, look for a neighborhood, and see what is the participation rate um, okay. 10 years ago by the census track. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would say you wouldn't, you wouldn't be surprised. Um, these are the neighborhoods that we know 
um, are not as engaged, are not able mm -hmm. to engage, feel disconnected. They typically need to be higher pockets of poverty. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you can see that the engagement, the civic engagement mm -hmm. is low. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage anyone to go on, look at this site. You can drill all the way down to the street level and say, oh, okay. you know what? I see a church here. I see a daycare center okay. here. Let me reach out as a concerned neighbor and see what we can do mm -hmm. to increase census participation. And okay. I think we all know when people don't feel the effect of something mm -hmm. or they don't feel mm -hmm. counted or they mm -hmm. feel um, a disconnect mm -hmm. with the have and the have nots that we mm -hmm. tend to lose that participation. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so important that we establish trusted voices like yourselves mm -hmm. in the community that can go out there and reiterate that the census is important. It's about being counted mm -hmm. accurately and it's mm -hmm. making sure that you're counted um, because this means better schools for your children, yes. better mm -hmm. roads to drive yes. on, and so many different resources that do affect their daily mm -hmm. lives. So yeah. my big thing for 2020 is just mm -hmm. as much as we're going to tell people to vote or to register to vote, yes. that the census is yoked just as equally with that. It is about participating and making sure your voice is counted. All right. So how do we overcome? Some people, they fear you know, taking surveys or if they see a stranger knocking on their door. Mm -hmm. um, they may may not be inclined to, to the open door, the door. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so how can we, what are some of the things that we're doing um, to try to combat the fear uh, that some of our people are having as far as completing the census? Yes, well, you know, everybody trusts the government, right? No. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, and I find that no matter who I'm presenting to, you get a lot of head shakes for that one. The fact is, is that um, we've got to work. This is a grassroots effort. Mm -hmm. This is okay. truly like you were talking about Remember neighbors among yes. neighbors and that participation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we really have to think of it at a very grassroots level. And I can go out as a partnership specialist and talk about the census and tell you how it works and all these things. But until I reach that trusted voice who can then go down mm -hmm. into their yes. neighborhood and, and truly advocate for this. And I'd say our faith-based leaders, our community-based yes. organizations mm -hmm. like yourselves, it is so important that everybody has a plan and they get yes. activated. And, and that is what partnership specialists like myself and Fair Count we're out doing is we're really trying to say, let's establish our trusted voices. Let's make sure they have access mm -hmm. to participate yes. in the census. Yes. Um, and, you know, as far as knocking on doors, I tell anybody, well, if you don't want the government to knock on your door, you have to do fill out your census. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, get your census yes. done early. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have a lot of people who um, may not want to fill it out accurately. They may not want to say that they're a resident here. Mm -hmm. They may not want to report on every person living in their house because mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. it's, you know, they have too many people in their home or, yes. you know, somebody shouldn't be living there. Nobody is going to see that information. Exactly. It is confidential information. Mm -hmm. And so our trusted voices really need to remind people that this information mm -hmm. is confidential and legally protected. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, there is no executive order from the mm -hmm. President of the United States that can access this data. Oh, this data somewhere. will not even be released until 70-something years. Yes. Here. Unfortunately, some of us will be gone when mm -hmm. this when this information. Mm -hmm. Now, the numbers will be released. Mm -hmm. But who you are, who's in your house, yeah, you. what mm -hmm. you look like, like those things are kept confidential. And so, like mm -hmm. right now, we're seeing census data from the late 1940s, early 1950s. Mm -hmm. And how cool is that? Because you're now seeing where somebody's story began. Right. Um, yes. And this... Right. These numbers, um, the numbers are everything for us to make sure that we get our communities counted and that we get funding. But who we are at this snapshot in mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. um, it's just a really powerful way to tell our story. And so I just really hope that, that people realize that the census is just the highest form of civic engagement. And because you can do it whether you're a U.S. citizen or not. I mean, right. oh, yeah, you're actually yes. expected to do it. <laughs> yes, whether right. You're yes, a citizen right. or not. Like so everyone again, is counted. <laughs> um, we're, you know, it's about getting that accurate count. Mm -hmm. But I would say that, you know, it really is going to take a village and it's going to take our neighbors, really mm -hmm. being neighbors, to remind people why this is important. Right. Okay. All right. 
All right, Mr. Gallo, I have a question. Since everything that we've heard, what are some of the most creative ways that Fair Counts have actually come up with? I know you're talking about the technology, mm -hmm. but what else have you done? Yeah, so I would say, of course, uh, one of the mm. uh, best ways that uh, mm. we have tried to access uh, mm. these communities has been through our technology mm. uh, and uh, giving uh, people access to uh, Chromebooks and tablets and things like that. But mm. I think I would have to say some of the uh, more um, creative things that we have done mm. is uh, basically uh, with the way that we have organized. Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. in my zone, zone four, we have three organizers. Okay. And we have gone out to counties uh, within West Central, Central, and uh, Southwest Georgia. Okay. And what we're able to do, we're able to take the ideas that mm -hmm. uh, many communities are doing to reach the reach their neighbors okay. uh, to make sure that everyone is counted in their, into their communities and see okay. what works, see what's not, okay. uh, and be able to pass that on to other communities. Yes. Basically, basically just experimenting mm, so okay. that everyone throughout the state of Georgia can have a fair and accurate count. So I would mm. say that's uh, some of the okay. more creative things that we're doing over okay. at Fair Count. All right, because I think that's something that helps us because we're wanting to reach, but we need someone that's already kind of tested the yeah, waters yeah, so that we can get an idea of what's actually going to reach yeah, absolutely. people there. All right. I would say that just being across the state, you're seeing, or you can see uh, who's mm -hmm. doing a good job, who's not doing a good job, what yeah. ideas will work, yeah, or what right, ideas right. will not work. Mm -hmm. right. uh, mm -hmm. So I think uh, just the way that we're organized at Fair Count. Uh, okay really helps us in helping people in Housing County and throughout the state of Georgia have okay. that accurate count. All right. And I did have another question about the homeless. Mm -hmm. How are we reaching those that don't have a physical edifice? They don't have a building right. or a right. home that they're, I right. mean, how are we reaching the homeless? So there is, um, the U.S. Census will actually have homeless coalitions that okay. will go out and, and actually do an enumeration okay. of of some of our homeless populations, like a physical enumeration. Um, okay. These are people who've been trained to mm -hmm. um, make sure that they have the trust of the areas in which they're entering, yes. um, provide some resources at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, great organizations that um, work with not only our homeless, but transient populations mm -hmm. are usually on complete count committees for a okay. county. Um, okay. So counties form these complete count committees, and it represents a, a, a strong uh, snapshot of different organizations throughout mm -hmm. the communities and resources. And so it's very important. I would encourage any county or any complete count committee to have somebody that may work with homeless and transient. Mm -hmm. um, computers are going to be so essential for this. Computer yes. labs, making sure people have mm -hmm. access. Because if you don't get the card in the mail, you will still be able to go online and complete the census. So okay. the site will go live and then that will allow people to, to come in and say, I okay. didn't get a card, I need to do the census. Um, obviously, it's a challenge because people got to make that oh, yes. that conscious decision mm -hmm. oh, to yes. do it. Um, oh, yes. And we have great partners here in Central mm -hmm. Georgia. Um, I would say River Edge Behavioral Health is one of okay. the strongest partners I've worked with who do have a vulnerable uh, population mm -hmm. um, who mm -hmm. don't always trust, um, you know, yes. what they right, have to right, do. And right. so they have really come up with plans in order to reach the people they serve to make sure that they have access to computers and that they know that a lot of the services that they're receiving mm -hmm. gets federal funding through census mm -hmm. participation. So that's that's a big part of the, the message. But um, there will be a specific designated day for that. And um, the other side of that is the complete quarters count. Mm -hmm. So anywhere that would house um, uh, more long-term um, multiple housing, uh, and I wouldn't say, but maybe temporary housing. Yes. So mm -hmm. that could be anything from our jails mm -hmm. to a nursing home yes. to maybe a group home yes. for um, some either mentally or physically disabled. Um, those will provide a group number. So okay. a lot of those numbers will already be, um, be able to be term determined by the administrative organization. Okay. So. Okay. 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 All right. Well, mm -hmm. I want to piggyback off of your question. Okay. And we were in a, a census uh, task force meeting last mm -hmm. month, and we mm -hmm. talked about some of the different categories, mm -hmm. such as your college students, mm -hmm. uh, people that are military that may be deployed, mm -hmm. people that may be under the care of a caregiver, mm -hmm. and newborn babies. Newborns. So can you take us through some of those categories that were discussed? Um, yes. 
um, those are special circumstances. We, mm -hmm. we, we went through mm -hmm. that, and, and it's really good to be educated on this. Um, the babies, um, yes. zero to five or birth to five, I should say, are typically the hardest to count. Um, and that's mm -hmm. because um, maybe people don't think about it, or maybe a baby mm -hmm. is temporarily living one with one parent instead of another, mm -hmm. or grandparent, and joint custody, all those complications. Well, count your children, y'all. Count your children. <laughs> That's all I can say. Nobody counts more than yeah. our children. Yes. But babies who are born on or before April 1 should be counted at the home where they will live or sleep most of the time, okay. even if they're still in the hospital. So if you mm, have okay. a baby on March 30th and you're still in the hospital, you need to make sure your baby got counted mm, um, okay. because that means yes. that they were born before April 1. Mm. Babies who are born after April 1 should not be counted in the 2020 census. Oh, okay. We're going to have to wait till they're 10 years old for that oh, one. Um, so um, people, um, another complicated thing is if you move on census day. So if you move into your new residence on April 1, count yourself at that, that residence. Mm -hmm. If you move out of your residence on April 1 but not have not moved into your new home, they should mm -hmm. count your, you should count yourself at your old home. So that's okay. one that, again, mm -hmm. like once you... Use your judgment there, but um, people who are visitors um, mm -hmm. depends on the type of visitor. So if you have somebody crash on your couch longer than maybe the average overnight stay yes. or weekend, and maybe they haven't, you know, they've put their toothbrush by your sink, um, mm -hmm. that may be worth counting. Okay. <laughs> they, that is important that they where they're living and sleeping most of the time is okay. where they need to be counted. Um, citizens of foreign countries who are visiting the U.S. on vacation or business should not be counted. However, citizens um, of foreign countries who are living in the United States, um, where they're living and sleeping most of the time, and this could even be an exchange student, they mm -hmm. need to be counted here. Mm, we okay. want their number. Mm -hmm. So yes. um, the college student is an interesting one to bring up. I get that mm -hmm. question a lot. Another undercounted population is it's our college tough. students, mm -hmm. um, especially those who live off campus. Mm -hmm. So if somebody lives in the dorm, they're going to be counted in that complete quarter count that okay. I told you about. Now, if they are away at school, they need, and they're living off campus in their own apartment, they're going to get their census card and they need to fill out their census. That means okay. if they're living here, we need their numbers. Yes. Um, unfortunately, that means if we've got a baby away from home, they're going to have to be, counted, be counted where they in. live. So okay. um, I would say that if you are working with college age students, mm -hmm. um, remind them that they count in the census. Mommy and daddy yes. are going to do it for them if they're doing, they're living yes. off campus. Mm. And I would also tell them to apply for these jobs. These are oh, yes. great jobs for college oh, yes. students. And it really heightens when finals are over. So mm -hmm. um, military, we're here in Warner Robins. Yes. So that's a big question here. Mm -hmm. um, those who are living in housing units at military installations, they will respond to the U.S. Census just like any of us mm -hmm. will. So they will get okay. the card in the mail. Mm -hmm. um, if they live in barracks or military campgrounds, then they're mm -hmm. going to go through a complete quarter count, so mm -hmm. they would be okay. counted. Um, but who, military personnel who are temporarily deployed overseas should be counted at their usual home address in the United States. Okay. So that would apply very much to a county like Houston mm -hmm. County with a mm -hmm. strong military presence. Mm -hmm. Even if they're overseas for a while, we want to count them here Still. on okay. um, where they live. So. Um, it's interesting to think, you know, there's many different special circumstances if you mm -hmm. have um, somebody living in a long-term health care mm -hmm. facility or maybe they're just in a, a short-term rehab facility, mm -hmm. um, count them at home. Totally. We, you know, okay. make sure, and, mm -hmm. and it is about making sure um, that you you tell your neighbors about that too. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, I know mm -hmm. so-and-so is away, but get them back home because yes. we want to count them here. Yes, come yes. <laughs> But that April 1 is a powerful reference date. That kind of gives you anything up to April 1 that you feel like is in your home count. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that's the date, April 1. Right. <laughs> All right. So yeah. did you have any closing comments to wrap up? Yeah, so mm -hmm. I would say that when it comes to the census, we at Fair Count, we see the census as being really a unifier for the community. We understand that 2020 is going to be a busy year. There's going to be mm -hmm. multiple elections mm -hmm. here in the state of yes. Georgia. 
But something that the community, no matter what your party, who you're backing, something that everyone can unify around is making sure that everyone fills out their yes. census. Yes. yes. And stressing the importance of the census to that community so that communities throughout the state of Georgia can be a better place. Okay. All right. Miss Wall. Oh, I just echo everything Stephen just said. I mean, <laughs> you know, when it comes down to it, does somebody say, why do I need to do the census? I have two things, money and power. Money yes. and power, y'all. And everybody wants more of that no matter yes. where they fall on yes. the spectrum. So um, it is making sure that our communities get their fair share so that mm -hmm. we can meet the needs of our oh, residents. Yes. And it is making sure that we have representation from the local yes. to the federal level. And again, going back to where that story begins, so many people are on Ancestry.com right now wanting to know their roots. Mm -hmm. This is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. All of that uses census data and it mm -hmm. affects our lives mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So not only should you be counted, but make sure the people that you know and care about um, are counted too because they are driving on your roads, their kids yes. are in your schools, yes. and they're using your resources, and it's important that those dollars follow that person. All okay. Right. Right. We want to thank the both of you for joining us on thank RAG you. Talks. And we, the women of the Warner Robins Alumni Chapter, are partnering with both of your organizations as members yes. of the House to County Census Task Force, yes. and we stand ready to partner side yes. by side, shoulder to shoulder yes. to ensure that everyone in our community is counted. So right. thanks again. Thank you. Thank you all for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.